Hello everybody, welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well, and we're doing a box office preview for this upcoming weekend, which sees the release of Bad Boys Ride or Die. Kind of crazy that this is now the fourth film, I believe, in the Bad Boys franchise. Never been a Bad Boys fan myself, but I do know that there are a lot of fans of that out there. And we especially are today going to be looking at what these early projections for the weekend are going to mean, especially in comparison to the previous films of the franchise, even the last one being back in 2020, right before the pandemic went into full swing, and how this film seems to be matching up to it. And let's just say, very similar to what we've seen with many other films and many other franchises, this is not looking that great, especially in comparison to where the other films in the franchise have been. Let's just say there is a lot of people, a lot of people in general, that are no longer going to see the movies in general, but especially in different franchises, we can see actual audience loss as far as what we see expected on the opening weekends of these movies. And so Bad Boys, Ride or Die, whether or not it's going to make money or not is still a question mark because it had a relatively lower budget at $100 million, but even that is still quite a bit of money to make up. So we'll talk about that. We also have another new film coming out this weekend, which is a smaller film, The Watchers. This is actually coming out from the daughter of M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how his daughter does in comparison to him, if it's a similar style, if it's it is something completely different, something completely new, or if it is the modern day version of Shyamalan where he puts out mostly bad films that have very silly twists, if even, and the ones that do exist just aren't really all that great. Before going any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button, a lot of that fire button over on Odyssey, and smash the rumble button as well. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with that bell, make sure that way you know every time a video or live stream goes live on the channel. So first, starting off with Box Office Pro, as you can see for them, their range is pretty generous here saying that it's opening weekend domestically, Bad Boys Ride or Die, 45 to $60 million. So low end 45, high end 60. So we're looking probably somewhere around that $50 million range, at least according to the metrics being reported by Box Office Pro. This is a bit different than what we see reporting over on Deadline, as it says right here that Sony's Bad Boys Ride or Die is hopefully wanting to hit $75 million or more globally, which would be $40 plus million in the United States and Canada, and $35 million abroad in a 92% footprint. It says pre-sales for the R-rated fourth quarter are behind that of the previous pre-COVID threequel Bad Boys for Life. Now, again, remember, when it comes to pre-sales, those are always a bit of uh, fool's gold anyway, whether they were better or worse than what that film did, because it doesn't always make up an account for walk-up traffic. That is something that only positive word of mouth can be, effective marketing can be, and as someone who has not even seen the trailer for Bad Boys Ride or Die, because I've had no interest in it, I don't know exactly how effective they are being. I've seen a lot of people ask more questions of why are they making another one? And oh man, some of them are looking kind of old, not looking that great. And so who knows whether or not that's going to impact the bottom line. But $40 million is, again, the domestic range, the domestic projection being given by deadline. They obviously give some room that it could be potentially higher than that. Um, but this is obviously not nearly as high as the $50 plus million being projected by Box Office Pro. Going to Box Office Theory, Deshaun Robbins, who tends to have some pretty good takes on these things, he has a range closer to that of Box Office Pro, but also still in that middle range of $45 to $55 million in the the overall box office. Now, it says right here that it's going to have apparently a strong PLF footprint, including IMAX. So this will be, again, something that will probably draw some people out. It also means that the overall amount of money made opening weekend will be that much higher because the average ticket price that they will be spending on the film probably will be higher, too. This is something that we've seen for a lot of these movies, right? Anytime there's a big film, anytime that there's even, I would say, this would be more of a medium range film as far as just what it's made box office wise, the type of audience that it has. It's, it's more of a mid range range release that when you do have those premium format screens, yes, it does increase your overall box office take. However, it also means the amount of people going to see your film are actually a lot less than are what being indicated. We'll dive into those numbers to show you what I mean by that in a second. The second film to talk about is The Watchers opening from Warner Brothers, opening to eight to $13 million domestic, so nothing too crazy there. I would say for a first time movie, that seems to be okay. Whether or not it actually is able to even break into the double digits, right, of the millions of dollars is gonna be a huge question. It's gonna be something that we're gonna be tracking here. And I think it's gonna come down to word of mouth. Have not heard anything about the film. The movie does look intriguing. I Again, I've at least seen the trailer for it. 
and it does look intriguing, but I have not heard any positive or negative feedback at this point. And whenever there really isn't a whole lot of stuff going on, Again, that could ultimately have an impact. It says reviews may be meaningful in this social media and buzz sensitive era of media consumption. Unfortunately, critics' reactions were not yet available at the time of this report's writing. And so obviously not getting early reactions from the film. And critics, we all know, mean very little when it comes to box office because the critics really aren't being listened to by most people. And so I'm going to wait for people like Chris Gore. I'm going to wait for people uh, like Critical Drinker and others, right, who might have access to early access as screens to give some thoughts and obviously it is premiering tonight and so anyone out there who is going to see it tonight please let me know in the comments when you do whether you think the film is good or not so let's go further into this bad, bad boys ride or die number okay so the first thing that we need to keep in mind right is the film is set to be released right now right as of uh, today going into tomorrow it's going to be an international release I look at that poster this is obviously going to be one of those first times Will Smith is in a movie that is post slap uh, people have been asking is that going to impact the box office I would say not really. If it has any impact on the box office, it would be marginal at most, right? We're talking about very, very small movements because you might have some people that actually pay attention to the Oscars and care about that crap who would say, well, I can't support that movie because he, it has the guy that slapped Chris Rock. Whereas you have other people that might just be like, again, a few handful of people might say, oh yeah, he slapped Chris Rock. I want to go see his movie. I want to go see if he gets slapped or if he does some more slapping. That's fun. So maybe there's some meme energy here that could potentially help it a little bit. I'm just not seeing it at this point, though, so don't expect too much from this movie. Um, but really what we have to talk about, though, is where this is comparing to the other films in the Bad Boys franchise. And so we go to my chart because we love Chauncey on OMB Reviews. And so this chart right here is showing us what the original Bad Boys film did, what the sequel in 2003 did, what the 2020 release did, and what the expectations for Bad Boys Ride or Die are going to be. And you'll see this is a trend that we've seen in many different franchises franchises, right? With the opening weekends being so much more weak today, right? So much weaker today in the world, in the market compared to what we've seen in previous years. So starting with Bad Boys 1995, that film, when you adjust for inflation, had an opening weekend of around $32 million with around 3.5 million tickets sold. This was the first film in the franchise in the 90s. So it makes sense that the film didn't have the huge, you know, the biggest opening weekend that one could imagine. Obviously, it was very impactful, though, because by the time you get to Bad Boys 2, you see a huge increase, right? Almost doubling the audience, $77.6 million there when you adjust for inflation, but also the Ticket sales around on average 7.7 .7 million tickets being sold that weekend for that movie. So very impressive. You go then to 2020, so 17 years later, and you actually see something that I find to be quite interesting, right? You do see a decrease, but when you take into account it's been 17 years removed from Bad Boys 2, it actually is a pretty good hold, right? $73 million opening weekend for Bad Boys for Life, right, with those adjusted numbers, and 6.6 .6 million tickets sold. So about a million less people went to go see Bad Boys for Life versus Bad Boys 2, so there was some audience loss there, but to have that kind of hold over 17 years, especially at a time when you were about to go into that pandemic era, that is, again, I think a very impressive thing to see. What's not impressive, though, are right now the projections for Ride or Die. As you can see, it goes off quite a bit. It does still, at least, again, if it makes $50 million, which still remains to be seen, but if it does get to the $50 million domestic opening weekend, that would mean, based on the ticket price of today, that it would be around 3.8 million tickets sold. So that would be slightly higher than the original film's 3.5 million tickets sold, but we can imagine down the line with Bad Boys 95 probably getting more tickets down the road when people talked about it, word of mouth campaigns, things like that. Whereas for Ride or Die, uh, again, even if the reviews are mixed, it's just not really a market right now for a lot of these bigger budgeted movies, right? $100 million is definitely on the lower end of big budget, but it's still $100 million. That's still a lot. That still means you need to make two fifty to $300 plus million dollars just to break even at the box office. And this also, this number here is assuming it gets to that $50 million mark. So let's go ahead and see what happens if it gets maybe a little bit less. What if it gets to $45 million? All right, there you see the number 3.4 million tickets. Let's say that it goes really, really bad and goes to the very bottom of the range of 40 million. That brings it down to 3 million tickets. And then you can see, okay, let's say it underperforms entirely. Let's say the Thursday numbers come in, there's new adjustments to the weekend, and they're saying, okay, now we're looking at maybe 35 plus million dollars for the weekend. All right, now you're dropping all the way down to 2.6 million tickets. So that would be about almost a million tickets less 
than the 95 release, and then you're in real danger of potentially, uh, again, having a box office flop on your hands. And so we're going to keep this in as the 50 million because that is what seems to be the consensus for it. But let's just say it's not looking all that great. It isn't. And I know that there are definitely some people out there. Oh, there we go taking care of that real quick. So there are some people out there, obviously, who are looking at this and are thinking to themselves, well, you know what? All I want to do is go see the movie because it looks like it's going to be fun and I want to be entertained. And again, good on you. What I'm just trying to say is to break down the actual numbers, right? To actually be objective with it. That's what I do. I look at numbers. I try to keep my emotions out of it. Obviously, I get happy and excited when things that I don't like are doing poorly. And I get sad when things that I do like are doing poorly, right? And, and vice versa. But at the end of the day, I'm going to always report the numbers as they are currently being reported. And as you can see, this is just not on paper, objectively speaking, looking good for Bad Boys Ride or Die. At a $100 million budget, if it opens to $50 million domestic, and if it does get upwards to $75 million international as what was being reported over on Deadline, right, then you are looking still at a ways to go. And if the film itself is not able to hold on to its audience, is able to get good of word of mouth, is able to motivate others to, to spread the word and to go see the film multiple times, we'll probably see some pretty massive drop-offs in that week two, week three, week four, especially with more films coming out, right? We are in the month of June, the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and so that means that we are going to be seeing a lot of movie releases coming out both this month and next month, which means more competition, and in the era and the age of media that we are currently in, word of mouth always and, and typically is going to have a make or break uh, effect on a given film. Haven't heard much about this one, so I think that that actually says a lot, right? Typically, you hear a lot of early positive signs, positive reviews, positive buzz. We're really not getting that right now. It seems kind of more muddled. And whenever you are in a position right now in today's market where you have a muddled response, gone are the days when people had exposable, uh, disposable income that they could go out and go see movies that they had no interest in seeing in the first place. Go out and test movies that maybe they thought, I kind of want to see it, but I don't really care for it. But hey, you know what? I've got an extra couple bucks lying around. Let me go ahead and get a, get a movie ticket. Go get some popcorn and a drink. Those days are no longer here, right? Especially in the economy that we are currently in, people are a lot more careful with their money, and so they're not going to spend it on things that they don't think are worth their time. For me, I think of a title and a movie like Bad Boys Ride or Die and say, okay, maybe one day if it comes on streaming, but I've also never seen the other films, and so I can't even say that. But right now, it seems the numbers are kind of reflecting that at this point in time. Let's go ahead and do a bit of an update, or we'll try to do a bit of an update for the box office as of this video. So you can see Furiosa is still, uh, again, Massive flop, $181 million in the red, according to my typical charting. Uh, IF still also in the red. Garfield film has broken even. I talked about this last time, but remember when you take into account the RCC chart, my random crazy method of charting, where you take into account the splits domestic, international, and China, the film is almost to the point of breaking even, getting very close to doing that, and definitely will by the end of its run. But currently, these are the numbers as they stand. What are y'all's thoughts on this upcoming weekend? Do you think that that bad boys ride or die is going to be coming in in a glorious way and going to be making a ton of money if anyone's wanting to know more about what they are projecting after this fact right so the watchers is the number two film of the week they're projecting the garfield film to come in at the number three making six to ten million dollars meaning that furiosa is might is potentially you know getting bumped out of the top three so again furiosa continuing to plummet and that film expected to be a $150 million plus loss. If you want more on that, see my box office breakdown from this past weekend. But let me know your thoughts. Do you plan on seeing Bad Boys Ride or Die? How do you think it's going to do at the box office? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button. A lot of that fire button over on Odyssey and smash the rumble button as well. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge special shout out to all of my Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and YouTube members who are at the Chosen of Valhalla 
level. Starting off with my Patreon supporters, Father Luca Illich, Rosetta Allen, check out her YouTube channel, which is Eagle Rider, and Miss Martin Muses, check out her YouTube channel by the same name. To my subscribe star chosen members, Matt317, check out his Twitch channel by the same name, and also the K-Man, the K-Man, check him out at xtheboundaries.co, and a shout out also to my one chosen of Valhalla YouTube member, Mr. Roy. Thank you again for being so much of a huge supporter of the channel and to every one of my chosen members. If you want your name shouted out at the end of every live stream and video, or if you want access to things like giveaways of Blu-rays, 4Ks, etc., and access to an exclusive podcast bonus material for members, check out the links in the video description below for all of those details. You guys are amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful rest of your day, a blessed month of the Sacred Heart, and as always, God bless.